Good afternoon, everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic coming to you from downtown Yuma right now. We got a Statue of Liberty here replica in front of this uh, old Oyo Arizona hotel made out of bronze. It looks like a bunch of used metal parts. There's a wrench, there's some pliers, even an apple in there. And uh, kept in good shape, looking good there with a nice view of the uh, New York City modern skyline there. Today we're out exploring because I don't want to sit around at, at the lake. The desert is getting to me. <laughs> it's like the first time I've actually seen what looks like real grass. It's probably artificial though. As a matter of fact, it's definitely artificial grass here in Arizona. Most driveways have uh, rock and stuff. But I will be uploading this video with some connected internet. Check out the video description below for all of your high-speed mobile internet needs. It's working great for me today. We're gonna go play around in Yuma to start and then get over into California to explore a little bit on Black Betty, my Harley. Thanks for joining me, guys. But before we do any exploring and just stop by here, a new Harley store here in Yuma is uh, Bobby's Territorial Harley Davidson. I need a Harley part. Noticed uh, after I left camp that my seat was a little bouncy. It's not supposed to be that bouncy, Eric. Yeah, we lost the uh, little Phillips screw, the little seat post screw that holds the seat down. Uh, luckily, it's still latched in up front, so I didn't have a problem, but I could tell something was not right. And uh, when I felt back there, I'm like, oh, yeah, we lost the screw. So hopefully they have a new uh, screw for my seat. Yeah, let's go check out Bobby's Territorial Harley Davidson in Yuma, Arizona. All right, I got the uh, screw I needed. Now I'm just looking for a T-shirt. Look at these. I don't think I have a green Harley shirt. Bobby's Territorial Harley Davidson with the prisoner on the bike there. I kind of like that one. Oh, never mind. They don't have it in my size. Nothing is extra large over here. Oh, there's one. Oh, wait. That's actually kind of cool. That's the front. Oh, but the back sucks. Darn it. There's another extra large. Something small in the front. No, nope, I don't like it. That's the only bummer part about my size is it's hard to find extra larges. They are literally the most common shirt size for Harley riders is extra large. Here's one in the, in the green. Okay. I don't like it. I don't like it. Oh wait, I found one more spot. Small, medium, large, okay. 2X, 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 dang it, that's the one I really wanted too. Well, slim pickings here in Yuma. All right, I'm gonna go with a gray one. I don't think I have a gray Harley Davidson t-shirt, so something new, that's what the front looks like, and that's what the back looks like. Yeah, they have all sorts of parts in stock here in the parts department, and I just did something that I have never done for any of my motorcycles before. I upgraded my battery. They even gave me a loner Phillips screwdriver and I just popped in a lithium Harley Davidson battery, a $300 lithium battery. It's so much lighter than lead acid gel. And uh, it was just time. I need a new, a new battery anyway. So, and my charger at home will work for this lithium battery. It's good for lithium or lead acid. So I don't, I don't have to get a new trickle charger. I can use the exist, existing trickle charger there. I've got that. And let me get the seat back on. They didn't have the exact one I wanted. They didn't have another Phillips version, but they just got the thumb one. I, I feel like that's not ideal because somebody could just twist it off and take my seat or unhook my battery. Not that it's safer with the Phillips. I mean, anybody who has a Phillips could just take the Phillips one out too. But because there's alarm on this bike, any touch sensitivity, you know, anything you try to do while the alarm's on it will set the alarm off. So, all right, that's covered. But again, before we get any further into exploring, my stomach is growling. And there is one of my favorite, well, two of my favorite restaurants are here. Road 
Texas Roadhouse and In-N-Out Burger. And, uh, but Texas Roadhouse doesn't open up till four here, so you know where we're going. By the way, I am using a new microphone and a new camera. My other camera crapped out on me and I'm waiting for some parts. So we got the Rode Video Mic wireless mic with my Sony mirrorless camera. And uh, hopefully the audio is okay. I, I checked it ahead of time. It looks like it's not peaking, but trying something new today. A couple days ago, I posted on Instagram. A friend sent me some pictures. I was wrong. I thought it, I thought we had adult pictures of Tig in Sholo, a spotting. Uh, my friend just thought it looked so much similar, and I thought it did too. I posted it to Instagram, and a couple people right away said, no, that stripe's different, Eric. No, I think it's a female dog, Eric. I'm like, oh, oops. I was wrong. The trolls were right. All I do is lie all the time. <laughs> I don't think it was uh, Tig after all, but he's somewhere up there in Sholo, and I'm sure we'll see him one of these days. Let's uh, get on the road. We'll get some grub. Here we go. In and out, front row parking. It's been a while. Oh wait, I just had it in and out in Vegas. Well, I guess we're having it again. <laughs> Once we get over into Texas, I'll be all over the uh, Whataburger locations all over. Yeah, maybe I'll sit outside. It's 81 degrees today here in Yuma. It is definitely getting warmer down here. Yeah, we are lined up all the way to the back, but they're pretty quick. Won't be long. It was actually about a 15 minute wait. Longer wait than usual, but look at this. Nine bucks for a burger, a double burger plain, fries, and a drink. You can't even get a meal for under 14 at McDonald's. So, uh, not bad. I get mine plain and then put ketchup on it. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. It was real good. I'm glad we stopped. Okay, I uh, shed the vest. It's, it is warm out here in California. We're here in Bard, California, farmlands. Lots of agricultural stuff going on, but um, a lot of old rusty metal junk out here. Vintage signs and tractors and, and cars. And uh, this old sign right here says we are at the Cloud Museum. And this door says it's open. Before we go in there though, let's see what else they got outside. Basically, a lot of rusty metal junk, antiques. It says, <laughs> probably the largest collection of Model T's in the world. Okay. And early household items, farming, mining equipment, and engines, and uh, old school plows and motors, and a uh, wooden wagon wheel right there. <sighs> That's in really good condition for an old wagon wheel. Yeah. Lots of uh, farm equipment here. Oh, look at this old Garner Denver motor. Ah, sucker. Man, there's another Cloud Museum sign on top of this. This almost looks like the type where they would have the Budweiser's, the Budweiser cans being delivered by a horse-drawn carriage type of thing. I don't know, pretty weird. Lots of metal signs. And again, right next door to just massive open fields of agriculture. Off in the distance, there's a date palm tree nursery over there. They grow them there, and then they pull them out of the ground and sell them from the nursery. I love my palm trees. Well, let's go check out the museum, guys. Let's read this sign before we go in. Wonder what's inside. Over 200 Model Ts and As, restored vehicles, gas pumps, farm equipment, engines, bicycles, household goods, vintage business equipment. Let's do it. Look at this. Those are old pumps gas pumps. I don't know anything about this place, but he sure collects some cool stuff. It's an old school scooter of sorts. Oh, it's a scooter buggy. It's like a trike with wood. Old Coca-Cola sign back there. The whole perimeter sidewall is nothing but more of those wooden wagon wheels. Lots and lots of them. Uh, and people say, I've got a hoarding problem. This is incredible. It's just rows and rows of antique, rusty Model Ts. Some of these might be Model As. All of these are Ts. Look, that one's even got a, a dump lift on the back. <laughs> All sorts of different uses for these Model Ts. I like this wooden deck on this one here. Let's see, this one's got a bathtub in it, a couple bathtubs, a little flatbed, and this one's for hauling gas. Just checking on my way out, making sure I didn't miss anything that some, some of you guys 
catch things that I don't see, but uh, anyway, I just got kicked out. No video or pictures inside Mr. Cloud's museum. I'm not even gonna finish the tour because he's incredibly unfriendly. I tried to explain to him, I'm just showing a little bit of this to help promote your museum and try to get more tourists to stop in on by. He said, no, we have a strict policy. Anytime I see anybody holding the camera, I, I come out here and I talk to him personally, tell him to put it away or leave. So I've decided to, to uh, leave. This might be a cool place, but um, I'm just kind of grumpy people that are here. That's what you get for coming out. People aren't quite as friendly to video cameras and stuff like that. It is what it is. I'm not gonna beg him. <laughs> We're just gonna get on the road and do something else. Hey, uh, we'll uh, take our time getting back. No, no rush. It's beautiful weather out here. Uh, unfortunately, we're not chasing world's largest anything today. Actually, the exact opposite. I present the world's smallest church, open for worship, prayer, and sermons every Sunday. The world's smallest. Literally, both of my sheds at Taterland are bigger than this church. Wonder if we can see in. Oh, I see some stained glass windows in there, like right here, stained glass. Maybe it's like Catholic church isn't just always open. I don't know, let's see here. No way. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is incredible. Look at this. You can sit two, four, five, and then another five people over here. Two, four, five. So it's a 10 person chapel. <laughs> there's the Bible. Oh, there's even a guest book here I can sign. I'm definitely gonna sign this if there's room. Are we empty? Nope, it goes all the way to the end. Well, I'll just sign it right there under Skylar. But yeah, pretty cool. Sometimes world's smallest is just as fun as world's largest. <laughs> all right, I have never ever seen a sign like this before. Caution, bees stay clear. Bees, guys. Uh, I'll keep an eye and ear out. Let me go see what's up here. This is the bridge to nowhere. It's warm. It is, it's probably rattlesnake season now. I should definitely be paying a little more attention, especially in the tall shrubs. The bridge to nowhere, it looks like it's closed but I also feel like this is possibly just to keep cars out and bicycles. I don't think it's closed to pedestrians. Wait. Oh. There's where the bees are. They're in that yellow flower. Can you hear them? They're buzzing loud. Yeah. Okay, a warning sign for bees. I'm not a history teacher here, so I can't tell you exactly what this bridge used to go to, but on Google Maps, it's referred to as the bridge to nowhere. And um, I don't think I'm gonna go any farther than this because there is an actual sign that says, no trespassing by order of Department of Public Works. So can't go past this area right here. Well, we can look down. It's hard to believe that that may have been a pedestrian bridge possibly. Well, I don't know, maybe in the olden days, oh look, it's wide open. You can tell people have gone through here. They just sneak right through here and walk on the bridge. Technically speaking, back in the day, this could have been a one-way automotive bridge over there. It could have been. A lot of times when bridges around the country are deemed unsafe for vehicles, they just change it over to a pedestrian bridge because it's a lot less weight on the bridge. This one apparently is not safe for anything. So we won't go on it. Somebody, somebody made a heart out of rocks. If you're into that sort of thing, love. Uh, I'm kind of going to head back to camp, but I, this is new. Uh, on the way to going today, this was not happening here. Damn. I don't know if they just opened the dams today, but there's a lot of water flowing through here that was not here earlier this morning. Look way over there. Can you see the water like coming over the edge? Wow. Some people were telling me that they do open up that reservoir over there at Senator's Wash. I think we need to get home. <laughs>
Sorry guys. I didn't film when I got back because I got a little panicked as I went across the top hill and looked down and the whole freaking reservoir was completely full. All of this was dry when I left today on my motorcycle ride. I brought the bike down. I was actually parked between that blue truck and that other camper right there. Water was right up like feet away from my trailer tires of the motorcycle trailer. So I carried that back up, walked back down here. I got to get the bike back up to my new site up on higher ground. Um, yeah, little note to you guys. If you ever come down here to Imperial Dam Senator's Wash, this water goes up and down without warning. Although I do think there is kind of a shoreline. I, I think most of the time, as long as you're at these dedicated campsites with barbecue grills, and, and, and fire pits like this, I think you're gonna be okay. I don't think the water comes up too much higher, but uh, too risky for me, uh, terrifying. Uh, my stomach sank when I came around that corner. And uh, anyways, we're gonna stay here one more night at the top of the hill, and then we'll be moving on as well. So let's go get reunited with the kitties. Um, Tara, can you, oh, just cleaning your leg. You're really weird when you stick your leg straight up in the air like that, like this. That's what you do. That's what you do, you little putts. I watched you do it. You went like this, and it went straight up in the air like that. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> you funny girl. Thanks for kisses. Where's Opie? Where's your big brusher? Where's your big brusher? Dunno. All right. Little monster. How about this one? <laughs> I love my kitties. What do you think, Opie? <laughs> Sometimes I bring the toy box out and just kind of let the kitties pick what they want. And if they get bored of it, I'll put it back in there and they won't see it for six months again. But sometimes they gotta just pick what they're in the mood for. Opie loves these little bell balls. I'll bet he'll play with it. No, you want a different one? I'm gonna let you pick. You get to pick, Opie. I'm not gonna interfere with your choices. Tara, you want one? You can grab one, Tara. The box is open. Help yourself, okay? Opie, what do you smell? You <laughs> big ham. You big ham. You're so handsome. Terry, you want this one? Want the ball? Got a fuzzy on it. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave that open so you can pick. There's one, there's one with uh, catnip in it, too, Tara. Did you find the catnip ones? There's some in there, but probably... I think that one might have catnip in it, Tara. Want to try it? No. Oh, wait, this one definitely does. Oh, yeah, the bacon catnip. Tara? <laughs> Good girl. Good job, Tara. I'll let you pick. Go ahead. You can pick. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to intrude anymore. I gotta get rid of this carpet, guys. I hate this carpet. Carpet's coming out soon. I guarantee you that. Oh, what, did, what did Opie find? Opie found something. Something with a ribbon. Terry, are you gonna find something? You should. You should help your little self. Okay, okay. Mm. <laughs> you sweet babies. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and close this video out, guys. Everything outside has been loaded into the RV and into the trailer. I just need to finish clearing off all the kitchen areas and everything inside. And then tomorrow we'll get back on the road in my next video. Y'all have a great weekend. Opie, Tara, and I will see you in a bit.